We have Lloyd Singleton with us today to talk about landscaping for energy conservation. Welcome, Lloyd. Thank you. Now, how can you conserve energy with your landscape? Interesting thought, isn't it? Yes. Um, whether it's a retrofit or you're actually planning a new building or new construction, there are a lot of things you can do that actually strongly affect your energy use of the building with the landscape. It can have to do with placement of trees and shrubs. It can have to do with the amount of pavement, um, a, num a number of different things. So that's what I'd like to talk, talk about today and give some ideas. There's no government uh, subsidies for this, are there, for energy conservation? Not that I'm aware <laughs> of now, but it would be a good idea. Yeah. It would be a good idea, yes. Okay, well, how would we start? Well, keep in mind, uh, picture yourself in a shady park on a hot summer day. You just walk in the shade and it's going to be a a whole different feel. It may be 10, 15 degrees cooler in the shady area. Much better um, than on the sidewalk and street. It's always much hotter there. Exactly. So you think about how much the uh, paved surface does affect the heat um, and that's going to make your building warmer and the more concrete you have the um, higher your air conditioning costs are going to be. So um, I think one of the, the best things to do is, is spend some time in your yard and recognize where the, the directions are. For instance, you need to know where the sun sets, where's, which way's west, and then what happens in the, in the afternoons. It gets very, very hot here. And so that's where you want to create some shade. Uh, and then if you look at the time of year, too, it's going to be different. Uh, in the south, uh, the winter time, the sun comes from the south. And you may want that warmth. And so you have to think um, what do you want to do with trees on the south side of your house, mm -hmm. maybe to let some light in. Uh, maybe avoid having trees or use the right kind of tree instead. I know on the west side of our house it gets very, very hot. So we've uh, planted some trees and some vines and stuff there. But we want it deciduous trees so that in the winter time that heat will come in and we can use it. The leaves will be off the trees. So that's exactly. a way to think of that. Exactly. Exactly. And then the other thing to think about in the winter time, the sun is lower in the sky. So if you have a really tall palm tree, it may help shade the area of the, or the roof line during the summer months, but then the sun might peak under that in the winter too. So you, between deciduous trees and the use of palms, you can decide to let the light and the heat in when needed. Okay, but the microclimates are the, the different areas that we have around the house and that's what we have to consider when we're... Exactly, which is why I recommend choosing. spending some time outside your house and pay attention at different times of the year. Where does the wind come from? Is it a cooling breeze in the summer that you want to allow? to get in or is it a, um, a cold breeze in the winter that you want to block so that it doesn't uh, make things colder. Uh, the microclimates of shade, of moisture, if you have a lake or a water body on one side of your house, that's going to be a different temperature zone than the opposite side of the house as well as the direction uh, that your house faces. Now a lot of people don't want large trees around their houses anymore, especially after the hurricanes that we had in 2004, 2005. Everybody, if they, they didn't lose their trees, they wanted to cut them down so they don't have to worry about them falling on their houses. What do you do there if you, you know, if you have that, that dilemma, a big tree for shade to cool your house or is it possibly going to destroy your house? Right. Well, some options would be using palms instead because they, they can be closer and, again, still shade a, a good portion of your yard or your house uh, and not and be And they're less likely to, to less be blown likely over? To fall over or have a limb break off. They don't yes. have limbs. Okay. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is even your shrubs, your ground cover, can have a lot to do with the cooling effect. Um, if you, versus having a sidewalk or a big driveway right next to the house, if you have, have it planted, um, that the evapotranspiration of the, of the shrub material itself is going to help keep that landscape cooler, keep the area around the house cooler. And you do have the option of, say, arbors with vines to, to cool an area, exactly. a larger, a taller area. Exactly. And vines are a great way to do that. You can kind of uh, create those zones of protection and create some shade with a, a vine on an arbor or a trellis and get a lot of cooling effect. You've probably heard of green walls. A lot of people are actually growing plants and vines right on their walls, too, to keep that, that cool Or even going. the green roof. The whole green roof thing, is that reduces your energy requirements, it's right? It's very huge, yes. And you have to make sure your roof is set up for that, both in, in weight and uh, uh, waterproof, because you don't want uh, <laughs> your roof <laughs> yes. leaking after a while. But um, yeah, green roofs are a real trend. Now, is it really cost effective to do landscaping like this? It is. You know, the University, um, sorry, United States Department of Energy estimates that planting three trees in the right place in a home landscape will save between $100 and $250 
per year in energy costs. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. The actual return on investment, according to the Department of Energy, is less than eight years. So what you spend now in a properly planned landscape for energy savings, will you'll recoup your investment in less than eight years. Wow, that's a pretty good reason to And to energy spend costs money. are going up, too. Yeah, you know, so not, it can only get better. That, it, that. <laughs> exactly. The return on investment is definitely worth it as the landscape grows. Now, what about savings in our power equipment? Because uh, you could also Well, if you <laughs> think about there. it, yeah, we, we might spend a lot of money on gas and oil for our two-cycle equipment that we use to maintain our landscapes, where a properly maintained landscape, properly planned for low maintenance, you'll use less of that energy. You'll use less mowers and blowers and, and uh, trimmers. So we're going to be planting more plants, but we're, it's going to be less expensive to maintain? Sure. If you plant the right plant in the right place and you don't maybe have as, as large a turf area, you have more shrubs and maybe they're native shrubs and they don't require a lot of trimming or not that boxed clipped hedge look, maybe a, a more natural form, uh, it's a great way to uh, save on the use of power equipment as well as your time in the landscape. Uh, not to mention you're reducing your noise and your air pollution too. Do trees and shrubs make it cooler than the grass? Or is there, has there been any work on, on what actually makes it the coolest? The trees or? are actually the, the best at actually reducing the uh, ambient temperature in the area around the home, yes. So shade trees create shade and shade is cooler. <laughs> okay, what about wind effects? Okay, if you do have that summer breeze that tends to cool, you need to direct that to your home or to your patio area, for instance. You want to make sure you don't block that wind with tall shrubs. You actually might want to make kind of a tunnel and uh, let that wind blow where it needs to blow for the summer breezes because there can be some nice cool breezes in our, our evenings. Do we have to worry about, again, wind or which direction we get to predominant winds that might make it hotter? or? Um, thunderstorms or anything like that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of all storm damage. <laughs> well, you do, and again there I think it's important to know what happens at your house. You need to spend some time and observe what actually happens in your uh, own microclimate because there will be variances depending on, um, on your location. Are there publications that uh, we can look at that would suggest plants that we can use for these things? Absolutely. Uh, if you visit your uh, University of Florida Extension office in your county or the website, uh, we're happy to help with uh, specific uh, Florida-friendly landscape plants that would work. There are some publications that are actually on energy conservation as well. I yes, and the U.S. Department of Energy has some very good publications also. Okay. Okay. Any other tips? Um, just plan your landscape well, keeping energy conservation in mind, and uh, ask your extension office for help on that if you need it. Okay. Happy to help. Great. Thank you. Thank you.